Spring training somehow is right around the corner. And to preview everything to look out for with the Atlanta Braves, I'm joined by who other than our Braves beat writer, Justin Toscano. Justin, did you even get like a day off for vacation? I did. I did. Our editor, Chris Vivelmore, always tells us to just go away a little bit after the season, which I do appreciate. So I, I got some time off. I got some rest. Uh, and Sarah, I'm in, I'm in bed by before midnight every night, which will not happen the next eight, nine months. Um, I'm living a great life with tea at the end of my nights, consistent workouts and in the morning. And that's about to end. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm always sitting here asking myself around February 7th or 8th, like, where did the last four months go? But I'm always excited to ask that question. So now it's like I'm I'm back. I look around. I see all the Braves stuff. Uh, we're talking about Braves baseball. I'm I'm ready to get rolling. And your life is just done being well-rounded. You're just done with that. But I do know that Braves fans are so eager to turn the page because we all remember, you and I were both in Philly, yep. last season did not end great. So they got some reason to be excited for this upcoming year. From your perspective, what are the biggest things to watch? Well, it stems off of that Philly disappointment for the second year in a row, right? I always say that spring training uh, to pull from the Gen Zers is a huge vibe check. Like, you want to see the mood in the room. Is there confidence? What's the belief like? Of course, the Braves will be one of the teams with the most belief, you know, in baseball because spring training is, after all, a time where even the Pittsburgh Pirates and Kansas City Royals think that that year can be something that different. Anything's and that anything's possible. Anything's <laughs> possible. Um, but the Braves are one of those few teams that you look at and you're like, man, I want to, you know, I'm, I'm really feeling good about this team because of how well-rounded they are, the stars, the core that's locked up for years to come. So what I'm going to be watching for is like, what, what are these guys going to say? What are they going to do to make this year different than last like how much does last year stick with them how much is that going to drive them forward beginning in spring training at braves fest spencer strider told us about one simple thing they're going to change the rhetoric throughout the season to better prepare for the postseason to better be in a mindset uh for what is a sprint they didn't have a lot of edge in that postseason series that's one thing i'm going to be looking for I want to see how things shape up with this pitching staff i want to see who's going to be the number five starter you know you know the top four Freed, Strider, Morton, Sale. Is it going to be Elder? Could it be Smith Schauber? Could it be Hurston Waldrip? I know, who knows? And I'd like to, I always think that no matter how set a team is, those last few spots of the bullpen, to me, as a baseball nerd who covers the team every single day, are very interesting. I want to see where they're going to go with those. Like, could a guy like Ken Giles, who might still have a little bit left, could he take one of those spots? Um, and that third thing is, I'll, and I'll keep it pretty brief because Brian Snicker says it best. In spring training, there's always at least one surprise. So who's it going to be this year? What could it be? Talking about that, we talked about how the core for the Braves is pretty darn locked up. Mm. And I think for a lot of fans, that's encouraging because you have that reliable roster. The bulk of your roster is just so reliable. Who are some young guys or some new guys or some names that people are a little bit less familiar with that you're like, okay, these guys have a chance. Yep. So one of them is going to be Jared Kellenick. Uh, so for those who enjoyed their Thanksgiving, their Hanukkah, their Christmas, whatever it may be, and got lost in the offseason shuffle, the Braves made a lot of moves to bring in Jared Kellenick, and they acquired players, they traded away those players, they released one. There, were, there was a string of moves to bring in Jared Kellenick um, and to be able to acquire him that they needed to make. And they view him as a guy with a lot of upside. He plays better defense than Eddie Rosario. And if things go pretty well, he should be able to put up similar offensive numbers. He's a former top prospect in the Mets system. Um, and when he was traded to Seattle, he, he unlocked a little bit of that potential. Still, we haven't seen it uh, in full. So I think the Braves are about as good of a team as any at maximizing talent, maximizing potential. He's going to be, if all goes well, um, and if all goes to plan, the starting left fielder replacing Eddie Rosario. But a couple more young guys uh, you're going to you know, want to watch out for. Hurston Waldrop is mm -hmm. a non-roster invitee, you know, first-round pick last year. Sarah, this guy was so good that in a couple months, he went from low A to triple A mm -hmm. and ended at triple A um, and a job well done, you know, wasn't in consideration for the postseason roster because the Braves just wanted to keep him at a good workload after his season at the University of Florida, which culminated um, with an appearance in the College World Series. But he's got a nasty splitter, which the Braves thought was one of the best out pitches, one of the best secondary pitches in the draft last year. Maybe he competes for that fifth spot. Maybe he's not as far off, 
you know, not very far off at all. Um, I'm going to be watching those two. And then I really want to see how this bench shapes out. Like a guy like Luis Guillorme, you know, for casual fans might not know a lot about him, comes over from the Mets. He could do everything, you know, once upon a time, a couple years ago. He, you know, middle infielder, decent, you know, contact bat. Um, seems like a pretty, you know, pretty solid bench piece for them. And a guy we haven't heard about a lot lately, Huascar Inoa had Tommy John surgery at the end of 2022. Uh, in September 2022, the Braves, you know, once a highly promising starting pitcher. Um, we haven't heard a lot about him. I wonder if he could be in competition for that fifth spot and, and could make a, a real charge at that. It's uh, as the Braves got rid of some guys this offseason, Soroka, Kyle Wright, to name two of them. They kept Eno around, which might tell you a little bit about what they see in his upside after this procedure. Let's keep it on pitching and talk about, you know, what's coming. You're yep. already smiling. Yep. Chris Sale, the Braves acquired Chris Sale. He's a guy who, I mean, I was really excited when they got him. Yeah. Chris Sale is so good when he's healthy, yeah. but he's been injured a lot. What did you make of the Sale signing? It is a big risk, but there could be a big reward attached to it because Chris Sale, I think the positives you look at is, you mentioned one of them, when he's on the mound, he can be dominant. The strikeout stuff is amazing still at this age, you know, um, in his mid-30s. And he's got a full offseason. Like, he's had a full, healthy offseason. And that's really big. Players, we as media members don't often know it or talk about it a lot. Um, but players always say that having a full offseason for your full routine, for, you know, to, to work on things uninterrupted is really, really big. And for the first time in years, he's had that this offseason. Um, I also really like the edge. I really like what he brings from a personality standpoint, um, and I think that's something as we talk about the playoffs that can really help this team. What kind of potential does this team have, as much as you can predict, in February? Oh, I would say they won 104 games last year. I think they can win 106 this year. And I say that because I think that the couple issues they had, the lack of, you know, they had a lot of depth in that pitching staff last year. But they didn't have the top four they do this year. They didn't have the Freed, Strider, Morton, Sale. Like, if you keep those guys healthy, that's a very, very good top four. The bullpen, by all, you know, by all measures, is much better this year. You look at the velocity they added, um, the stuff they added. In the later innings, like, Snit's going to have his pick of the litter from innings seven, you know, six through eight, you mm -hmm. know, before they get to Rysel Iglesias. It's going to be tough for other teams. I think they showed up a lot of those holes, and I think Kalanick for Rosario is pretty much at the worst a wash, at best an upgrade. And so I do think that in terms of potential, it's World Series or bust again. You know, we, I hate that moniker because it lacks context. Um, Man, it seems like but, every single season. Yeah. That's and, the case every single season. And they've built this thing to a point where that really should be the expectation, and, and they view it like that. But in terms of... What could be? I'm not going to say they're going to break X amount of records like they did last year, but I think it's possible to win more games than they did last year, especially when you consider that they kind of slowed down a little after winning the division so early last year and lost a few games here and there. I think they can win at least 106 games this year. We've seen the Dodgers be up there or even have won more in regular season pass in the last few years. This Braves team's about uh, as good as any. I'll give you this to close this one. Fangraphs releases their annual postseason in World Series odds. Uh, the Braves are near lock to make the postseason, of course. But to win the World Series, they've got them at almost 25% odds. For context, the Dodgers, who are second on that list, 16%. Wow. So that's how highly projections and people think of these Braves. Things are going to have to go differently in the postseason if yeah. that is the case, though. But no matter the destination, that journey is going to start in spring training. Justin and I will be headed down to Northport next week, which is just crazy. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you go to AJC.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel to find more of your favorite Braves news.